Tonight, I want you to turn with me to the 10th chapter of Mark's Gospel, beginning with verse 17. And when he was gone forth into the way, there came one running and kneeled to him and asked him, Good Master, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? And Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but God. Thou knowest the commandments, do not commit adultery, do not kill, do not steal, do not bear false witness, defraud not, and honor your father and mother. And he answered and said unto him, Master, all of these have I kept from my youth. Then Jesus, beholding him, loved him, and said unto him, One thing you lack, go your way, sell whatever you have, and give it to the poor, and you shall have treasure in heaven, and come, take up the cross, and follow me. In this passage, we find a young aristocrat, a very wealthy young man, coming to Jesus. He'd probably stood around hearing what Jesus had to say. And now he runs to Jesus and falls on his knees and falls on his face, and he said, what must I do to get eternal life? You know, I was reading in Time magazine, I think it was in their February 1st edition this year. Uh, I was abroad at that time, but I picked it up and read it. And it had uh, the discipline problems in the 40s among young people in the schools. Listen to what these great disciplinary problems were for the principals and the teachers of the 40s. Talking was one. Second, chewing gum was another. Third, making noise. Four, running in hallways. Fifth, getting out of place in line. Five, wearing improper clothing. Six, not putting paper in the wastebasket. Those were the great problems that the schools faced in the 40s. Now listen to the problems we face in the 80s in our schools. Drug abuse, number one. Number two, alcoholic abuse. Three, pregnancy. Four, suicide. Five, rape. Six, robbery. Seven, assault, primarily on the teachers. Next would be burglary. Next would be arson. And the last would be bombings. What a difference between the 40s and the 80s on the great problems that are being faced in our schools today as far as discipline is concerned. And that affects our learning so that our learning in America and our schools is far behind Japan and Korea and Taiwan and many of those places. And what are we going to do in the future? What will it produce in the future? It's a danger for America because we're not getting the education equipment that we need. I heard a speech some time ago by Dr. Ernest Boyer, who used to be president of the university system here in New York and a great friend of mine. And he made a speech in Washington and I was there to also speak. And he said some of these things. And then I heard another speech made by Mr. Bennett, who is the former Secretary of Education, who is the Secretary of Education of the United States. And he said some of the same things, warning about what the next generation can expect because our school system is so filled today with troubles and difficulties that our teachers have to spend so much time in discipline in comparison to a few years ago. And then I think that our teachers are underpaid. I think our policemen are underpaid. I think our firemen are underpaid. It's amazing to me that we pay football stars and basketball stars and uh, all kinds of film stars and rock stars and all that high prices but the people that risk their lives to defend us and keep us safe and the people who teach us are uh, paid so little. And not, I'm not running for any office. That's my thoughts to you free. There are no shortcuts in education. There are several things that I'd like for you to hear tonight. First, there's the high price of sin. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. There are three kinds of death in the Bible. There's physical death, and I've noticed in the place that we go sometimes, uh, cemeteries here in Buffalo, a lot of cemeteries it seems to me, and some big ones. And I guess people die here like they do everywhere else. And uh, then the second kind of death is spiritual death. There are many of you that are spiritually dead right now. Physically, you're alive, but your spirit toward God is dead. And then there's the second death or the third death, which is the moment you die physically, you die, you go into eternity away from God. That's called the second death in the Bible. 
the high price of sin. The Bible says, whatsoever a man soweth that shall he also reap. The Bible says, even as I've seen, they that plow iniquity and sow wickedness reap the same. You're going to reap someday what you're sowing right now. In Proverbs 1, it says, therefore, they eat of the fruit of their own way, and he filled with their own devices. Proverbs 5.22 says, The evil deeds of a wicked man ensnare him. The cords of his sin hold him fast. Many of you are bound by the cords of your own sin and the habits as a result of sin. I heard about a king many centuries ago that would ask a great chain maker to make the strongest chain he'd ever made. And he made this chain and he brought it very proudly to the king. And he bowed before his majesty and the king said to him, is that the strongest chain that you could build? He said, yes, it's the strongest chain, I think, sir, that's ever been made. He turned to his guards and he said, bind him. And he bound that man with his own chain. And many of you tonight are forging links of a chain which will someday bind you. Is it worth gaining popularity and losing the smile of God? Is it worth gaining pleasure to lose fellowship with God? Is it worth being successful and losing your own soul? The Bible says that all of you have a body, but inside is your soul, your spirit. That's the part of you that's going to live forever, the part of you that could have fellowship with God, but you can lose it. And many of us are gaining our body. We're getting, we're having physical fitness all over the country, but we're losing our souls. We're not developing our spirits and our souls through Bible reading and prayer and church attendance and going to prayer groups and Bible study groups and fellowshipping with others and living for Christ and giving to people that are in need. All of these are spiritual exercises that we're neglecting and we're destroying our souls. Too many think that you can go out and live the way you like. Go to church on Sunday or perhaps go to some religious ritual that your church demands and everything will be all right, but it won't. It's wonderful to be a member of the church. It's great to be baptized. It's great to be confirmed. But that alone is not enough. Jesus said you must be born of the Spirit. You must be born again. And many young people today have fallen into the trap of drugs and this crack thing that we read so much about is so frightening that just one time using of it, you become an addict, a cheap form of cocaine that is going to become an epidemic in this country, already is among young people, destroying them before they ever get started in life. And then there's the social diseases of herpes. We don't hear much about herpes, but I'll tell you it's spreading like wildfire. And now we have AIDS. No one lives with AIDS. You live a while, but it's always fatal. There's no cure to AIDS. And they don't know how many people have it because most people don't want to be tested for it. They're afraid that they've got it. And then there's death and hell. Is it worth living your own life the way you want to live it other, rather than living for God? Our famous talk show host, host quoted statistics the other day. It said that, he said that 27% of every entertainment dollar in America is spent to stimulate sexual desire. That runs into hundreds of billions every year just to stimulate sexual desire. Is it worth it? The Bible says, the world passeth away in the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abides forever. All that lust and all that the world offers is going to pass away. And you're going to be left holding an empty soul, gripping your heart, because you're going to die. And you're going to have to face God at the judgment. What about you? The world's stars burn out. Its idols fall. Its favorites wane. Think of it now. How many rock stars come along and then they're gone? How many years has it been since Elvis Presley died? They come for a short time. They appear on the stage and they have all that tremendous adulation for a short time and it's all over. And the Bible teaches that life is so brief and we have just a few hours left in our lives to give to God and to give to things that really matter.